Mmm, I love having some mac and cheese for lunch. Don't you, Mr. Bear? <laughs> there you go. Oh, it looks like I'm getting a phone call. Hello? Hi, Mom, how are you? I'm good, I just ate some mac and cheese for lunch. Yeah, the mac and cheese that I found in the pantry. <gasps> that was your mac and cheese? Oh, no, I'm really sorry that I just ate it. It's okay, Mom. I'll pay you back. How much was it? $422 for mac and cheese? Mom, that's so much money. And I don't even know how to pay you back because all I have are these $100 bills. How am I going to pay you back $422? Oh, you just want me to round to the nearest hundred and I'll give you that much money? Okay, sure. I'll just round to the nearest hundred. Thanks, Mom. I need help. How do I round to the nearest hundred? I forgot! Okay, so I don't know how much money I need to give my mom. Maybe if I put my $100 bills on a nice number line, it can help me see what I need to do. So I have this number line here that starts at zero and goes over to 500. Let me just try putting my $100 bills on the number line and see what happens. So I have $100. That's part of the money I need to give my mom. Let me write that down. I know that the space from here to here represents $100. So if I take another $100 bill and I put it right here, right next to it, hmm, this is $100. This space is $100, so what should I put here? What number should I put here? Yeah, you got it. It's 200. I'm just adding up my hundreds. Okay, so now I have another $100 bill. Put it here. I know that I have one, two, three hundred. Let me write it down. Other $100 bill, I see $400 up here. Hmm, that's almost enough money to give my mom, but it says 422 so I want to make sure that I'm covering all my bases. Let me put up another $100 bill. Hmm. And it already says 500 So I have five $100 bills. Hmm. I also know that $100 is also the same as two groups of 50. See, I have one group of $50 and another group of $50. So I could just put these underneath my $100 bills. Hmm. If I have a zero here and then I add $50, it looks like halfway in between, I'll have $50. Let me do the same for this next hundred. I have two fifties. Let me put these groups of fifties in that next hundred. Hmm. So I know this is 50, and we said that this is 100. If I have 50, 100, I have 100 plus 50, that's going to be the midpoint in between these two numbers. What is that number? One, two, three groups of 50. 50, 100, it's 150. If I keep going, it turns out that with all of these groups of 50, they're going to give me my midpoint. This would be 200. In between 2 and 300, the midpoint is 250. How do I know? Because I can count. One, two, three, four, five groups of 50 up until this point. That's 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300 would be next. I can just keep going until I get to 500. Hmm. Here's my next question. Just so I can see it, where does 422 go on this number line? Where does 422 go on this number line? Well, I know that there's four hundreds. That tells me that it goes somewhere near 400. Where is 400 on this number line? Let's 
let's see. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250. Oh, here's my 400. So it must go somewhere around here. If I know that 422 is above 400, it's going to be somewhere over here on the number line. I don't even need the rest of this number line. I don't want it anymore because it's going to confuse me. I'm going to come right over to this number line. I have 400, I have my midpoint of 450, and I have 500. A shorter way that I could set up that number line is just by asking myself some simple questions. The first one says, what place value am I rounding to? Hmm. My question says 100. I know I need to give my mom some kind of hundreds for that macaroni and cheese. My second question says, what's the digit in that place value? Hmm, my hundreds, it looks like it's a four. That means, oh, the value of that digit is four hundreds. So my lower benchmark is going to be four hundreds. And then we just do all the things we already know how to do. We have that 500 over here as our next benchmark, and then in the middle, just like we figured out before, it's 450. Hmm, here's the tricky part. Where does 422 go on this number line? Where does 422 go on this number line? I'm going to start here at 400. When you think I got to the point where I should plot 422, take yourself off mute and yell stop as loud as you can. Got it? Okay. Did I hear it? I think this is where 422 should go. If you're confused, maybe you just need to see this. There's 400, after that comes 401, 402, and we keep going all the way up, but we just visualize that in our head. We don't want to have to make so many different dots. There would be 100 dots in here. That's not what we want to do. So now that we know that 422 is here, we need to ask ourselves, is it closer to our low benchmark, or is it closer to our high benchmark? Hmm, another way we could think about this is, is our number below the midpoint or is it above the midpoint? If it's in this section here, it rounds down. Is our number in this section? Yes, it is. We're going to round down. Okay, so now it looks like I need to give my mom $400 for the mac and cheese that I ate. Ooh, that's some expensive mac and cheese, friends. Wow, that was tough. I'm glad that lesson's over. Oh, hold on, what's this? Hello? Hi, Mom. Yeah, don't worry, I figured it out. It's only $400 that I owe you, okay? What? You made a mistake. The mac and cheese was $1,422? And you want me to round that to the nearest hundred? I don't know how to do that. Oh. My mom just says it's the same process. That's interesting. Let's look at it. So if I have 1,422 that I need to round to the nearest hundred for that really expensive mac and cheese, I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. My step one says, what place value am I rounding to? Hmm. It looks like it says hundred, so I'm going to underline hundred. My next one says, what's the digit in that place value? Um, I think it's a four. Cool. What's the value of that digit? It's four and it's in the hundreds place. So the value is 400. Let me draw that on a number line. I know 400 is going to be my lower benchmark. I know I add 100 to get my next benchmark for 500, and we just learned that between 400 and 500, it's 450. Whoa, stop! There's something wrong. 1,422 is not between 400 and 500. That doesn't make sense. What am I missing? Is there something hidden 
that I forgot about? Hmm. I think I forgot about the hidden hundreds. Oh, there's all these hundreds in that thousands place. So I'm going to take that one from the thousands place and I'm going to remember to add those hundreds in. Now my number line is set up. I know I have 1,422. I see, hmm, where does it go on this number line? 1,400, 1,410, 1,420. Oh, it would probably go around here. Let me draw that star. If it's lower than my midpoint, if it's closer to my lower benchmark, I would round down. Great job, friends. I hope that we do a really good job on our Nearpod today. Let's see how we do.